Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. An important issue regarding Islamic punishments is the notion of the testimony of women being half that of a man. Our jurists think, and they, are, they are of the opinion, of, they are of the firm opinion, that the testimony of a woman is half that of a man. In most cases, they do not accept the testimony of a woman at all. However, in some cases in which they do, they, they think that it's the, it is always half that of a man. There are jurists who, in cases of uh, circumstantial evidence also, they accept the testimony of a woman to be half that of a man, but they are very few people. As I said, most of the people, most of our jurists, they do not accept the testi testimony of a lady in cases of hudud. Hudud are the punishments which have been ordained by the Almighty regarding certain crimes. Now, these jurists base their opinion on a certain verse of the Quran, and I'll read out that verse to you. The verse says, وَاسْتَشْهِدُوا شَهِيدَيْنِ مِنْ رَجَالِكُمْ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَكُونَا رَجُلَيْنِ فَرَجُلُونَ وَمَرَاتَانِ مِمَّنْ تَرْضَوْنَ مِنَ الشُّهَدَاءِ أَنْ تَضِلَّ إِحْدَاهُمَا فَتُذَكِّرَ إِحْدَاهُمَا الْأُخْرَى And call in two male witnesses from among your men. And if two men cannot be found, then one man and two women from among those whom you deem appropriate as witnesses, so that if either of them gets confused, the other reminds her. Now on the basis of this verse, it is, it is concluded that the testimony of a woman is half that of a man. Now if we study this verse in its proper context, two things become absolutely clear. This verse has nothing to do with the judicial forum. It is not that a judicial forum or a court is being addressed and said that if witnesses come to you in such and such a manner, then their testimony shall be acceptable in this way. This verse has come in the context of a social advice given to Muslims. If you study the context of this whole verse, we come to realize that this verse has been revealed with a particular context. And the context is that when people, they, they lend out money to each other, then they must write a document of that loan so that one must safeguard the rights and obligations of the two parties. And on this document of loan, witnesses should, should be called over so that there are other people who can testify to the whole deal. Now this is the whole context in which this, this uh, verse has been revealed and as I said, it is primarily a social advice given to people so that they do not end up fighting with each other on such issues. And the other important thing is that this verse specifically speaks of documentary evidence. And in, in documentary evidence, of course, there is one major difference which, which totally uh, makes it dif different and distinguishes it from circumstantial evidence in which crimes take place, for example. In documentary evidence, you select and choose the witnesses. You, it's up to you to choose whomever you want to as witnesses. Whilst in circumstantial evidence, this is not up to you. Whoever is there at the site of the crime, he, has, he or she has to be regarded as the witness. So therefore, any, any law which is made on the basis of, of our documentary evidence regarding witnesses cannot be extended to, to circumstantial evidence because primarily the nature of the two is entirely different. As I said, in one, the witness is selected by the people themselves and the other, in the circumstantial evidence, in the case of circumstantial evidence, the witnesses are selected by the Almighty. Whoever is there on the site of the crime has to be regarded as a witness. So in this case, no law can be made on the basis of documentary evidence which can, should extend to circumstantial evidence also. And in this regard, the final word of the Quran is, if we study this whole matter in its proper context, that there is absolutely no uh, difference between the testimony of a man or a woman uh, uh, as far as legal sense is concerned. If a judge is satisfied with the witness of a, of a lady in certain cases, he can pass his verdict according to that. He can accept her testimony and he can of course reject her testimony if, if, if there are two or three women. Similarly, if he's not satisfied with the verdict of five or six witnesses, he can still reject them. So in this case, the primary thing is that in matters of circumstantial evidence, in matters of crime, it is primarily up to the judge to decide who to accept as a witness. The Quran has not at all said that in all such cases of circumstantial evidence, the, the testimony of a lady is half that of a man. As I said, this verse primarily pertains to a social advice which is given to the Muslims. And also, if there is no law which on the basis of this verse can be enacted for, for crimes or for circumstantial evidence, which requires circumstantial evidence, simply because the nature of the two are entirely different. As I said, in the first of them, the witnesses is selected by people themselves. And in the second, in the case of a crime, we cannot obviously select a person as a witness. So therefore, we can say that the testimony of a woman is, is, is in, incorrect to say that the testimony of a lady is half that of the man. In all such cases where a crime has to be proven, where a crime has to be validated, it is left to the discretion of the judge to see whether he should accept a lady or a man as a witness.